MoMA is commissioning you at Radio City, a collaborative one night only composition that includes a mobile hanging, has a 60 piece orchestra that has a rotating light, laser cone, all these elements. What is your goal for Swan Lights? My true goal at this point is to participate as vitally as I can. You feeling one with the world and you protecting the world is something that is behind a lot of content in Swan Lights. Yeah, and almost there's almost a sense of being at war with society. A singer, a performer, is often making a loud noise. That's exactly what a singer is doing, is making a, a, a noise that in a pedestrian circumstance would be considered totally inappropriate. And they're also expressing a fever of emotion that is usually considered inappropriate mm. to do, at least in public or in front of people that they don't know really intimately. In the mid-90s, I used to go and um, stand out on the piers before they knocked down the piers over by Christopher Street. In the winter, they'd be completely desolate, and I would go out onto the very end of them and sing. And I'd just be singing to the river, and, you, and then you always had that buffer of the West Side Highway roaring with cars to sort of ensure that no one could hear you. It's funny, even though I'm a public singer, to be caught singing outside of the context, that very formal context of a concert is still extremely embarrassing. It's also an act of defiance, or even an act of, sadly, an act of aggression. You know, for me as a child, it was impressed upon me very clearly that, I, that it was inappropriate for me to express not just my feelings, but my basic sense of myself, like in my, in my effeminacy as a transgender person, so to assert one's, you know, effeminate expression as an act of aggression, it's also much more than that. It's a, an act of empowerment and affirmation of a different set of values, ultimately. I have aesthetic goals, you know, when I'm putting together the piece for Radio City, but that's almost become secondary to me. I want to put forward a, an alternate perspective advocate toward a, a radical shift towards the feminine. We can more easily imagine the collapse of the entire ecosystem than we can imagine a shift towards more matriarchal systems of governance. That is, is, seems more of an impossible, ridiculous notion that we would ask women to lead the way than, than that the entire world, that the ecology of the world collapse and that the ocean rise 30 feet in a in hundred years. That seems more reasonable and feasible to us at this point in time. And we have to ask ourselves, why? How did we become so hypnotized by structures that we put in place that they seem more permanent than nature itself? As an artist, and especially as an outsider, you know, and as someone that considers myself as living really on the fringe, I can still suggest that we, that we could think about doing something really radical. We sort of scrubbed out any trace of feminine spirit or feminine origin. In the last couple of thousand years especially, we've scrubbed it out and it's really served the powers that be in divorcing us from nature. But the, our only hope now is to retrace our steps and to rekindle our relationship with nature because without nature, there's no future for us, let alone the rest of the planet. You know, we love to pretend that the future is not a problem but the future is our destiny. The whole issue of like me as an effeminate, you know, as far as I'm allowed to go is as far as I'll go. I'm allowed to go and stand on the stage of Radio City Musical and express myself. It's a miracle. I don't know if it's ever happened before that someone like me has had that opportunity. You know, I'm gonna take that moment, you know, on, on behalf of everyone that's come before me. I mean, my group is named after Marsha P. Johnson, who was like the street transvestite action revolutionary who was pulled out of the Hudson River in 1992, who she died homeless. She was like one of the first fighters for, for rights for gay people in America. You know, and so for me, every time I see Johnson's Radio City Musical, I think Marsha P. Johnson, a Radio City Musical, it's a secret history that people who know Marsha, it's a, it's a, a triumph, it's a coup that we would have gotten that far. Do you know what I mean? That, 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 our, story, yeah. that mm -hmm. our story would be on that um, marquee. Every one of us has 
a kind of a responsibility to participate in that as, mm. as vitally as we can. And I'm trying to live up to that. I'm trying to do that for myself. Mm. I feel very honored having had the privilege to work with you on this, Anthony. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, Klaus. <laughs>